offensive mode. Configuring for attack. Power to weapons. Forward shields. Welcome back everyone, me Pooh here, and today I want to share with you some tips that you may find useful for your Acer Nitro 5 and some other laptops. Some of these tips will help with general performance and gaming. For the first tip, I went with adding more RAM. The machine I have came with 8GB and by adding 8 more, it significantly made my gaming sessions much better. I had faster response times and no jerky movements in some of the games. This also helps with running multiple programs such as spreadsheets, web browsers, and video editors. To be blunt, you know, the more RAM you have, the more data can reside for fast access, and this will be a benefit to you. I will have a tutorial in the description to help you if you need help installing RAM. Some machines come with 500 gigabytes, and some come with one terabyte. In this day and age, games can really tear through that quite easily. Games such as Red Dead Redemption 2, Call of Duty Warzone easily consume over 125 gigabytes, so more storage is a must. Depending on your machine and your taste, you have plenty to choose from. Adding a hard drive would be the cheapest option, giving up to 2 terabytes of extra space. This will connect to the MSATA connector in your laptop. Some advantages are that it's cheaper, you get more for your money, and sturdy outside container. Disadvantages, slower, most are 5400 RPMs, has moving parts, fragile platters, and can be noisy. Next is SSHD. This is a combo of the solid state drive and hard disk drive. The solid state hybrid drive works by using a small amount of high performance NAND flash memory to gather information of the files. It also stores all the most frequent files used by you in the flash memory. The SSHD connects to the MSATA port in your laptop. Advantages? More reliable to use because of its large storage with high speed. The moving part of the SSHD moves less compared to the other ones. Solid state hybrid drives allow you to easily access the files that you have used frequently. Solid state hybrid drive has a long lifespan and cheaper than SSD and is affordable. Disadvantages, the hard drive portion is very fragile, therefore it can get damaged very easily. If the NAND goes, recovery could be very difficult. Next is a solid state drive, mostly called by the name SSD. It is a type of non-volatile storage media that stores persistent data on solid state flash memory. Two key components make up an SSD, a flash controller and NAND flash memory chips. The architectural configuration of the SSD controller is optimized to deliver high read and write performance for both sequential and random data requests. SSDs are sometimes referred to as flash drives or solid state disks. Unlike a hard disk drive, an SSD has no moving parts to break or spin up and down. Depending on the version of SSD you have purchased, the SSD will connect to the M.2 port or the M SATA connector in your laptop. There is also another type of SSD using a different protocol or communications with your machine. It's called NVMe, which stands for Non-Volatile Memory Express, and is the newest protocol for accessing high-speed storage media. It has several advantages compared to legacy protocols. Although an NVMe drive is an SSD, it doesn't connect via MSATA cable, but connects directly into the motherboard by the M.2 PCIe slot. The M.2 part refers to the form factor and how the drive connects to the motherboard. Just like some SSDs, the drive is slightly larger than a stick of gum. Because the drive is connected to the PCI Express, it's pretty much directly connected to the CPU, which allows it to be able to deliver sustained read and write speeds of 2000 megabytes per second. Some advantages of solid state drives are its fast writing speeds. It's pretty much noise free because there is no mechanical motors and there's no fans or anything. And the decibel is pretty much zero. It has fast startup because there is no motor to accelerate the rotation process. It has no magnetic head, has fast random reading and minimal read delay. It has a small size and is lightweight. It's very durable, it's shock proof and fall proof. And since there are no mechanical moving parts inside, there will be no mechanical failure. Also, NVMe is super fast. 
Some disadvantages are solid state disk drives. Life is limited. You can only read and write so many times. Data loss is irrecoverable. It has a small capacity and NVMe drives are expensive. On your computer, you have programs that load when you enter Windows. This gives you the benefit of switching to them without delay, meaning that the program is already loaded into memory. This also lets some applications such as Steam to download updates in the background and antivirus programs to run automatically. That's good and all, but it also comes with some trade-offs. If you have too many starting up, you may use too much of your computer's resources, making it slower for you to log on and use the system. It can also make for your machine to struggle a bit if some of the startup programs are CPU intensive. To disable some of these startup programs, start by first right clicking on the taskbar and selecting Task Manager. If your menu is small, hit the button that says More Details. Select the Startup tab. Here you will have a list of your startup programs. Find a program you want to disable and move to the menu status column. Right click and select Disable or Enable. Are you tired of getting notifications from Windows reminding you to set up your Windows OneDrive or that you got mail? You can fix this by disabling them and free up some CPU cycles at the same time. Start by clicking the notification icon at the far bottom right on the taskbar. At the top, click Manage Notifications. Here you can configure the ones you want to see and the ones you don't. Just scroll down and hit the toggle button for each app. Personally, I just turn them all off completely by hitting the first toggle at the top. Once you've done this, your PC will be free from any notifications until you re-enable them. Windows 10 includes many visual effects such as animations and shadow effects. These look great, but they can also use additional system resources and can slow down your PC. This is especially true if you have a PC with a smaller amount of memory. Adjusting the settings can make your system snappier and free up RAM usage. So to do this, let's start by typing performance in the search bar. Select adjust the appearance and performance of Windows. Make sure the visual effects tab is selected on the performance options window. Select adjust for best performance. If you would like to still have some effects enabled, manually check each one. It's advisable though to just use the adjust for best performance radio button. When you are done with your selection, hit apply and then restart. That's just to make sure that all of the settings that you changed will take effect. If you want to gain a little bit more performance, try disabling transparency effects. These special effects look very impressive, but they also use your laptop's resources. Turn off these effects to gain a small boost to speed up your machine's performance. Let's start by right clicking on the desktop. Select personalize. Select colors. Then toggle transparency effects to off. You don't have to restart the machine, but more than likely, it's probably best that you do that just to make sure that everything is on and off. Windows updates are important because they often include fixes for critical errors or incompatibilities. Security holes are often patched, which when exploited could allow someone to use a loophole to gain entrance into your computer and steal information. There are also new features that could be added to the system such as updated browsers or stores. Fixes for software and hardware conflicts are also sent out as updates. So these are very important even though you may not have had any problems with your system. Let's start by heading to the search bar and at the bottom type Windows Update Settings and then select it from the menu. Next click Check for Updates button and then wait. You will be presented with available updates for you to choose and install, or you may be completely up to date. You can also customize this by pausing, changing active hours, and review your download history. Make sure to keep your system updated to keep it running as efficient as possible. Sometimes games are released that are using the newest video drivers. 
Often many people never think about upgrading them as their current games are working just fine, but as soon as they boot up a game they just purchased, problems start to arise. It could be a blank screen, lockups, or artifacts. In most cases, the newest driver can fix this, although it's not guaranteed. More than likely, it could just be the game and the problem was not caught during Q&A and could have been missed. A few steps to take is, you know, upgrade your video drivers. If NVIDIA graphics are used in your machine, locate the NVIDIA Experience application. You can do this by either searching in the search bar, locating in your start menu, or it might be an icon on your desktop. When you open the application, navigate to the Drivers tab at the top to the right of the Home tab. Once you click it, the application will let you know if you are current or if a new driver is available. If you use NitroSense, you can save some CPU cycles and RAM usage by selecting your preference and then closing it. It will still work as normal and you will save system resources in the process. If you need to use it, just click the NitroSense button and the application will reopen. Also, if you don't want your fans running on max settings but you still want your machine to stay cool, try using Auto and make sure the Cool Boost tab is toggled. This will allow your fans to spin a little faster than normal. If you're using the laptop and you find yourself having stutters and demanding games, you may be thermal throttling. Temperatures in the 90s will cause this and can be solved with a couple of tweaks. Having a 9th gen Intel CPU will allow you to use software such as Intel XTU and Throttle Stop. If you have an Intel 10th gen, then you still have a few options although limited. Reason being is because the Plunderbolt vulnerability has been fixed in 6th to 10th gen CPUs and others. I'll have a link in the description and in the video to the right so you can check them out. Sadly, this is the end of the tips and I hope you find them useful. The Nitro 5 is a good little machine, especially in the budget range, but like all lower end machines, most run a little hot. Sometimes these problems are from cheap thermal grease all the way to bad design, and the only way to fix the issue is to do a little tinkering. If you find that your CPU is in the 90s while gaming, rest assured that your machine will not burn out. It's normal. Your CPU has protections in place to protect it, and it's called throttling. In most cases, you will have sold your machine before the CPU dies. I know it sucks, but you have to understand that they are cramming very fast components in a very small space with hardly any cooling that's anywhere similar to a desktop. And with that said, if you found this video useful, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Mean Poo, 